Hey guys, Master Trainer Margaret here. So this week I wanted to give you guys a preview of my new class that I recorded that is a clinic of sneaky fit. So if you've ever wondered how to take T-Tap into walking at the grocery store, going to the park with your kids, going in an airplane, driving in the car, any activity that you can think of that you wanna increase your muscle activation just while you're doing your day-to-day -day life, then this clinic is for you. I have a ton of tips and tricks, and I also have a PDF of all of these tips listed out so that you can be reminded of them in your daily life. This is a preview of that. If you'd like the full length version, you can find the link to that in my profile. But I hope you really enjoy these tips. Okay, let's talk about walking. So a lot of people have asked, well, how do you apply T-TAC techniques to when you're out on a walk. And here are some ways to do that. So as we talked about at the beginning of this about our posture, you really always wanna make sure that when you're walking, you're walking with your toes forward. No ducking out. Oftentimes you will have one foot that wants to duck more than the other due to how flexible that hip joint is. My right one always wants to. So just keep that in mind when you're walking. Another thing here is you can think to shift the weight off of the ball joint of your toe. So instead of walking with your ball joint down, because when you do that, watch what happens to my knees. So let's say I'm walking and I'm walking with my ball joint. You see what's happening to my knees. There's an internal rotation on my knees, which means that I'm putting a lot of the stress when I'm walking on my knees, which is not good. So when you're walking, you can think shift that weight back into the heels. You think weight off of the big toe. And remember, like we described earlier, you're thinking of a tripod between the outside edge of your foot, your uh, underneath your ball joint, and your heels. And you're thinking like you're balancing on that so that you're not just putting your weight all on the inside or all on the outside. You're in a balanced stance where you're thinking no big toe. So you're not pushing your big toe down when you walk. Like I said, it hurts your knees. You can also think to keep those knees out. And when you think no big toe, when you walk, watch what automatically happens to my knees. Oh, they automatically start going towards the little toe. So that's great. Another thing that you can think of right here, and you can do this along with me right now, is what your core is doing. So instead of when we go into the grocery store and we're getting our shopping cart, grabbing it like this and proceeding to push it through the store, you can upgrade. And instead of having your thumbs towards each other, you can grip the cart with your thumbs away from each other. And when you have your thumbs away from each other, it automatically helps you be even taller in your posture and tap into those postural muscles in our back that we want to. It also stretches the chest and the pecs when you think to keep tall with your chin and your neck, and then you pull on the cart to get that muscle activation. Let's say you're a passenger in the car and it's a long road trip you're starting to get tired and bored and you need to get your heart rate up, but you're stuck in the car. Yes, you can actually activate in the car as the passenger. So what you're going to do is if you're a passenger in the car, one thing that you can do that will automatically start getting some stuff going is just pressing your feet into the floor. So pretend like you're getting ready to stand up, but don't stand up. And that's you're pressing your feet in the floor. You should feel your thighs engaged. Another thing that you can do is you're starting to feel like you Slouching in the car, take those mitten hands like I showed you earlier. Put those mitten hands on your thighs and then with an inhale and on the exhale, press those pinky fingers as you get really tall and then hold it as you inhale and exhale. So you can use this power of pushing to get yourself tall when you're sitting in the car and you're curling that back into a big C curve. And then you can come back up and you can arch. So this is a mini version of the spinal curl that I taught you earlier, but you're doing it in a chair. You're curling, hunching, and then you're coming up tall and kind of scooping out. That's actually something you can do in the car and it really, really helps. So head over again, remember in this, you wanna pretend like someone's pulling your ear to the ceiling. Your face is totally face forward. Hopefully the other drivers that are passing you on the other side of the road won't look at you funny, but it's all right. <laughs> Do an inhale. And then you can come back up to the center and just gently roll your head to the other side. It feels great. It's great for draining all of this lymphatic fluid on that side of our neck. And you would just rest there. And then you can come back over to the other side. And then you could just do a little, uh, little head rocks as well. So you're rolling over to the center and roll to the other side. Roll it over to the center and roll to the other side. And remember, you're pressing your 
your feet into the floor, if you can, in your car, and you're pressing your hands into your thighs to really ramp up that activation and the posture. You can also do little head turns where you turn your head to the side and you focus on shoulders square and just your neck's moving and keeping pressing those fingers. You can do the same thing to go to the other side, which would feel really great. Thank you.